Hello, my friend, and welcome to the 557th episode of the Sales Podcast. I'm Weshe for the Sales Whisperer, your host. Today we have a longtime friend of mine, colleague, Sarah Laws. I've known her through the Infusionsoft community for, I don't even know, probably a decade. Um, she is, we're going to focus today on masterminds. Uh, that is a, a component of her overall business that she has done for many years. Uh, and she actually got started in this whole space because of a mastermind. So that's why we picked that component. She's um, she's an expert at marketing, expert at Infusionsoft or Keep, um, at processes, very detail-oriented. Um, but she has been having fun and uh, making money um, on masterminds for many years. So we dive into that. Uh, so you're in for a treat. You'll hear us kind of bust each other's chops. It's kind of what we do. Um, but, you know, it's fun when you can work on your own terms with people you want to work with. And um, so that's what this uh, episode is all about. Uh, if you're looking for more ideas on how to grow, hit her up, hit me up. Um, as I've been mentioning, um, working on several different layers and levels that you can work with. Uh, it's all coming together. You've got, uh, you know, the make every sale. Uh, that content is on demand. There is a the sell more of everything community. So that is um, live calls. You can join month to month. You can join for a year. Uh, super affordable. Uh, I've got the one day, uh, your best sales day ever. Uh, so that's obviously a lot more but it's condensed. If you need fast growth, that's the thing for you. Uh, and then I'm bringing back the five. So um, in person, haven't done that in quite a while. But um, those are the things I want to do. You know, talking with Sarah, it's interesting, right? You, you talk with cool people, optimistic people, smart people, uh, and listen, right? Ask good questions and listen, and then let the answers percolate. So uh, that's what I've been doing myself. So no excuse not to grow. And look, as I record this on the evening of Monday, May 9th, uh, and I just had Sarah on last week, so this is super fresh. But, uh, you know, the cryptocurrencies are down, stock market's down, Tesla's down, Netflix is down, all these things. And people are talking about crazy times. And, you know, I think it is crazy times. I think, you know, with interest rates going up, uh, you're hearing all oh, kind of mortgage companies laying people off and blah, blah, blah. Okay. I've been talking about that for a while. Um, I was talking about, before I had a podcast, about the crash in the housing. And uh, I was a little early, but, uh, you know, we rented when we got here in Southern California at the end of 04 and bought at the bottom. You know, our house has gone up uh, over 100%, um, almost almost 200%, I think like 170%, something like that. Uh, crazy. But as you look around, the the indicators are there, the signs are there, but you can't pay attention to everything. So you surround yourself with smart people, people that are smart in areas that maybe you're not. And it's not that you are stupid. It means you're ignorant, right? Ignorant of the facts. You just... You can't be everything to everyone. You know, even looking at Infusionsoft, I didn't diversify from them for six years. And people are like, oh, should I should I get certified in this and that and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, I don't know, but I don't think so. It's like, what are you known for? Get known for something. Get known for knowing something. And then surround yourself, partner with, pay for, invest in groups and communities and trainings and areas that you're not as strong in. Um, but look, don't think that those other people have some big secret. Okay, invest in some training, some coaching, mentoring. That's fine. Masterminds. Um, but don't think it's going to be magical. It should be inspirational. It should be a catalyst. It should light something in you. Not just bring some secret that they have that you're lacking because they're just better than you. It's it's not it's not what it is. 
So I hope I'm making sense. You, When you invest in training and coaching from others, it's not that they're smarter, not that they're better than you. They're just better educated in a field than you are. So I hope you understand that. I want you to invest in yourself as times get crazy. And I think they will. It's an opportunity. Okay. It's an opportunity. You know, when there's chaos, when there's movement, you can make a move. So you may have to partner with somebody. You may have to pay for somebody's counsel, but do so in order to get the education that you can make a better decision on your own for yourself. Okay. If I'm not making sense, hit me up, talk to me. I'm on, on Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook. I mean, I'm everywhere. My cell phone numbers on my website, call me, text me. Let's see what's up. Okay. And uh, I'm happy to have the dialogue, but again, invest in yourself. I, I dialogue more often, more regularly, more timely with those that are in one of my programs. Hint, hint. Now let's bring on Sarah. Sarah Laws all the way from Florida. Then do we call you the maiden of masterminds? How's that? Is that good? I mean, I've never been called that before. The mistress of masterminds. I was thinking mistress. But like, I don't know. I think maiden sounds better, but if you like mistress, I'm fine with either. All right. So we're, we're that, we will come up with a definitive name by the end of this show. So welcome to the sales podcast. How the heck are you? Perfect. I am very excited to be here. Uh, after like, you know, 10 years of friendship, it's, it's nice to finally be, I think I've actually forced you to have me on this. I don't want to say invited because that would be an extreme exaggeration. Well, you know, the show is not quite nine years old, so it's not like I've avoided you for the entire 10 years. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know, all you had to do was ask. So, um, this is part of my, it's on me. This is part of my mentorship. Okay. I'm helping you get your ask in gear. Yep. You I should like see it. my inbox. I have a template just to reply to people like, leave me alone, leave me alone, leave me alone, leave me I'm alone. I'm pretty sure I'm in your automatic drip campaign for that. Yes. I email you, I just get an auto response of stop contacting me. And then you have an API script written that deletes. It gets real crazy. That resubscribes you, even though I've unsubscribed and blocked you. And then it still comes in. So I was like, I gave in. You win. Okay. You give in. Uh, you win. You made me cave. I, I'm finally, I'm finally doing it. Uh, oh, you know, I just, I didn't think I was worthy of you. So that's why I didn't ask. You know, I just oh, thought for sure though. you'd say no, like, <clears throat> no, but Hey, here we are. And you are the maiden, the mistress, the master of masterminds. How the heck did that come about? Cause I know I've, I've observed from afar your your martini mastermind, and um, I've seen I know many people that are in it, and they keep going back. So either you're you're spiking their drink, or you have pictures of them with livestock, or they're getting good results. So which one is it? I mean, maybe a combination of all of them. <laughs> so for me in business, one of my core values is if I'm not having fun, I'm not doing it. So martini mastermind, joining a mastermind group changed my entire life. And I would look at it and I'd go to it and I learned so much and got so much value out of it. And I was like, how can I put my own twist? How did it change your life? Where, where were you? Take us back to that day. Let's go back. Well, I was an employee at a law firm and the lawyer that I was working for joined a mastermind and took me along with him. I I, I met him last week, didn't I? You did. I was going to be um, implementing all the things. So he, just he has the best it. joke. You're going to have to tell us that joke before we're done. Absolutely not. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I, I went along and then it was just kind of like I found my people, right? It's all started around Infusionsoft, which is now Keep, and he wanted to automate his law practice. And then like just seeing every different type of business, it wasn't just like, It was a lawyer mastermind. It was, there were pet groomers and there were finance people and there were people with courses and all this, just so many variety. And there were so many. Was it an accelerator that you went to? No, no, no. It was, um, it was called the marketing automation group. So it started by three automation 
people. Oh, um, Micah okay. Mitchell was one of them. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. So it was all these different businesses. And it was like, as business owners, we all have very similar challenges, whether you're a pet groomer or a lawyer. And you're like, how could those two things possibly be similar at all? But businesses have the same challenges. We need leads. We need, you know, we have staffing issues. That wasn't a, a situation in our case because I was the only staff and I was fantastic. But um, you would have these similar similarities. And then throughout the group, people would come up to me and they would say, hey, how would you build this? And then I kind of accidentally fell into consulting because uh, I was like, wait, you'll pay me to build this automation for you? Who knew that was a job? So, so what, were you, uh, what were you doing for him? Were you doing Infusionsoft for him or something else? Yeah, everything. So it was me and him. So anything non-legal, oh. I was pretty much handling. Tiny little law firm. Okay. Um, so it, we automated his practice. We um, started doing webinars to educate physicians. And uh, he does physician contract reviews. Um, so simple you know, a simplified process of, you mm -hmm. know, he kind of has a product and now how can you automate it? And how can you talk to busy doctors that are all crazy all the time and barely respond to anything? Cause they're dealing with literal em medical emergencies all the time. Right. So, um, shifted. I started my own online membership site, um, partnered with him because he had invested so much into me with training and all the stuff. It just seemed like the right thing to do. And eventually left the practice and started my own consulting business. But I loved masterminds. I loved the power of when you put smart people together in a room, how fast you can make rapid changes and growth. You know, I, I say it and I've heard it a million times of entrepreneurship is lonely if I'm just sitting here in my little office and I have all these great ideas and maybe I'm having a bad day, like I don't have anybody to bounce things off of. So a mastermind group is perfect for that, for the speed that you can learn from other people's mistakes, the course correction that they can help you make. And a mastermind group, like a, a good, powerful one truly supports everyone. Like I, I'm, I'm pretty competitive, but I'm like competitive for all the right reasons. Like I just want all of my friends to be wildly successful. So I can call you and be like, Wes, we're going to an island, meet me there. And you're like, you're, yeah, you're not like more, you. you're not more competitive than me. <laughs> no, I'm friendly competitive. Want to I'd say you're aggressively competitive. What do you say? What? I'm a teddy bear. God, you are. I feel like we should go back to the story of how we met at, at some point, but go ahead. Um, no, no. Um, and what a bad saying, judge of character you are but what, what a, a great salesman I am to turn you around to show you the error of your ways <laughs> I even had like a testimonial from a good friend that said you were amazing and turns out he was right so uh, for me I then started Martini Mastermind and it was really just about having fun if I'm not having fun I'm not doing it business is hard enough so if you're if you can't have a good time while doing it, go get a job. Like <laughs> at least then at the end of the day, you can leave your problems at the office. And it was really funny. My mom read my first sales page for Martini Mastermind and she was like, babe, people who don't drink aren't going to want to join. And I was like, mom, I don't want them to. Right. I mean, two, 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 yeah. Uh, I will say that I got my first non-drinker and I was like, a few mom, I can sell to even a non-drinker. Uh, so that was, you know, I was a little excited, overly excited for that. But it, for me, it was just about like martini mastermind sounds fun. And like, we just drink martinis all the time. Spoiler alert, fun fact about me. I've never actually had a real martini. Mm, you drink fake yeah. martinis? Well, I like lemon drop martinis or a pomegranate martini, just a little something with my vodka to, you know, sweeten the deal. Oh, anyway, yeah. vodka, not gin. Yeah, I'm, I'm not a martini <laughs> drinker, so I'm it's a... yeah, no, I'm a vodka drinker. All right, uh, pure potato juice. Anyway, <laughs> the potato is a masterful thing, right? It's french fries, it's potato chips, it's vodka, it's everything. I mean, you can tell people you're on a juice fast and say that it's potato juice. They have no idea that it's just vodka. Uh, 
<laughs> but so Martini Mastermind started with like four retreat style events a year. So everybody leaves their business, goes to a location throughout the U.S. and gets together. I run a big property and everybody comes together and we hot seat and it's pure hot seat style. And there have been a lot of iterations along the way of sometimes I would bring experts in like, um, you know, a, a Google SEO expert would come in and give us like a lesson on it. But I found that the real value just comes from the conversations that people have and hey, these are my problems. And what are all of the creative ways, ways that we could, we could solve it. Um, and then at like a hot seat style, you know, I'm pretty strict with my rules. You know, there's no electronics, there's no phones there, you know, you're in it. We're all in it together to really just help each other. And then at the end of the hot seat, we all go around and take away what our biggest takeaway was for our business, because there's power in that. Even if you come with a challenge, someone else's challenge might trigger a thought for, oh, hey, I could go and implement this, or I could go and do that. So uh, that's where I come just a little, I just a little twist to the, to the format of the mastermind that I don't think are necessarily traditional. And, and the term mastermind gets thrown around a lot. So for me, that's a group of 10 or less people together in a room. There's a mastermind group like War Room where it's more educational and there's a hundred people in the room, still powerful, just a different aspect. You're not going to meet all hundred people. You're probably not going to hot seat and get, you know, the, the solution, you, your exact challenge um, worked on. And that's totally fine. There's a million different ways. I personally hate hot seating. I don't love all that pressure just on me to sit there and do it. I do it because you have to force yourself out of your comfort zone from time to time, but um, finding the right style and connection. So so as the leader of the mastermind, do you put yourself on the hot seat? Usually last and usually from the hot tub. So <laughs> that it's a little more casual and we can have fun and talk business and it gets, you know, it's just, it's the pressure off me, but it's my mastermind. So I right. get to do whatever I want. Well, I mean, uh, typically a mastermind leader won't do the hot seat. So that's what I was wondering. Uh, I didn't for a long time, but then when you have a group and the people all get to know you a little bit better and um, Martini Mastermind is just one thing that I do. It's not all of my things. You know, I CEO of full stack marketing and I run partner programs and there's a lot of things that I have going on. So my challenge can be one thing from any number of different, different things that I have going on. So right. um, they kind of forced me to do it. And so how, yeah. how did you launch it? So you had the idea, you, you go to this event with the attorney, you go on your own, you know, doing that first one is usually the hardest. You For know, sure. how'd you get that momentum? I luckily had built up a network and now I teach people how to start a mastermind. And really you probably know people who would want to join your mastermind right now. If you have your coach or a business um, influencer, you probably have the connect connections right now that you would need to start it. And it was really just a conscious decision. Of, I'm going to do it, put the offer out there, reach out to a couple of people and see if they're interested. Now, um, all right. But here's the problem, at least sometimes, is that because people do know you, they're like, why, why would I pay five or $10,000 to hang out with you for three days? And I have your cell phone number and can talk to you. Oh, now I know why you've never come to <laughs> my invitations. So here's where I've got to resell you on something. I, I also hate traveling, but so, so there's that. <laughs> the, so that's two things. Um, it's really just about conscious effort, right? Uh, as a consultant, so many times people are like, hey, can I just pick your brain for five minutes? And it's like, yeah, I mean, I... I kind of do that for a living and I like to feed my family and Wells Fargo likes my money every month from my house. So um, it's just a different challenge and vibe. And I did test it out as just like a one-time retreat. So I had a one-time retreat pricing. And then once they were there, got the value, then sold them into a year long program. And then that's how I started. I would um, allow people to come in and on a retreat basis. So they would come in for one event and then we would vote on if they that person would be invited into the group because a mastermind is really 
if it's an open group, you're sharing your, at a conference, you come up to people, how's business going? Everything's great. That's not true. <laughs> it's like, I mean, not everything is great all the time. And at a mastermind, you get the most vulnerable and you get the most out of it when you open up and share your actual problems. So to be able to have that trust and comfort level with the other mastermind members, you have to like each other. And a new person coming in might not be the right fit. You might think they are on paper and then they just don't gel with the group. So they might not want to join and your group might not want to join them. So it's a little bit of a trial process to make sure that it's a good fit and they don't have a super commitment. They're just committing to one, one retreat and one event. But then after that, um, you have to commit for a year. My programs last for a year. And is it like one, once per quarter and then like a, a monthly call or a weekly call or something? Monthly call in between for three hours to just like check in, catch up, make sure you're doing everything. We have some built-in accountability. Everybody has to take down their top three things that they're going to implement afterwards. And uh, the last person to put their accountability things in is the first one to hot seat at the next event. So it's like <laughs> gamified, weird. It, you know, it, it plays into the competitive spirit of most entrepreneurs um, in a fun way that is not too terrifying, I think. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Um, and then I'm just assuming that maybe you started low on the price, sold the value, got some testimonials, and then just keep raising the price. Uh, yeah. And as you know, it's a, like with anything, right? As my confidence level went up and I could see the value that was happening and, and the connections, then I just made it instead of like friend rate, I made it like business rate. So that, um, again, once you provide the value and have a little bit of confidence in yourself, then it's a lot easier to, to do it. You know, uh, there's mastermind groups out there that are $50,000 a year to be part of. I don't know if I could ever charge somebody that even though that value is there, it's just my comfort level. You know, I have people that are in Martini Mastermind that started a new business and have a, you know, they're on their way to nine figures mm -hmm. and that's bananas from just an idea that started at a mastermind event mm -hmm. but the idea then needed to be worked then needed investors and all that good fun stuff yeah you but should definitely charge them fifty thousand dollars see those guys i think i should for sure um i will get a louis vuitton eventually out of that but that's a different <laughs> different story um but it, for me, it's just, I love helping people and I love helping people figure out how they can make money, have fun and still have a life. You know, my kids like to see me occasionally. I like to just hit the beach when I want. And that's what it's about. Nobody goes into business for themselves so that they can work 120 hours a week and hate their life. Yeah. But it seems like most end up in that trap. Yeah. And that's where... Uh, for me, I feel like my mission is to help them end that, you know, I want to connect entrepreneurs. There's so much, our friend, our mutual friend that I was talking about earlier, I would say that I learned so many of, from his mistakes that saved me hundreds of thousands of dollars and countless hours of watching him fail. And then I was like, no, that doesn't seem like the right way to go or making a tweak or a change and, and being able to do something. And that's, that's the power of, you know, collaboration. And so many people think, oh, I couldn't, I couldn't be in a mastermind full of other people just like me. Like that's, they're going to steal my business. And that's just not my mindset at all. I don't, I don't feel like I have any competitors, just potential collaborators. When we can collaborate and not compete, I don't mean healthy competition to drive us to push more. I just mean like true competition where you're fighting for a client or a, a whatever that everybody wins. If we can work out win, win, win situations, then that's the thing. So for me, my next iteration of, or project that I'm, I just launched last week is a mastermind directory because to find a mastermind group that fits your schedule, your budget, your needs, it's not easy. Like you can Google it, find a mastermind near me, but that doesn't, there hasn't been really one source together and 
reviews that can be left of what people are actually getting out of it and testimonials and things like that. Even putting the company together, I would reach out to my network and I was like, hey, who's in a mastermind group? And do you have a link to a page? And they're like, oh no, there's no sales page for this. It's just like, who do you know kind of thing? So for me, I built um, Dex Connects to just give entrepreneurs an easy way to find what they might need to go to the next level or the ability and training to start a mastermind. It's incredibly powerful. Even if you don't hot seat, it's incredibly powerful. Yeah. Just, just leaving the confines of your home, your home office, your office. And, you know, I I didn't appreciate it for a long time with the value of it, but I would see like in corporate America, they do an offsite. I get the executives, even the sales team and, you know, get away from the trappings and the routines. And, and now I understand it from a, from a neurological standpoint, like how, how we fall into habits and routines. And for the most part, habits, routines are good, but obviously you have bad habits and routines and changing that state, being somewhere else, uh, being with different people. um, You're going to get new thoughts you know, and, and it can, it can really spark something and and people don't take enough time to, to get out and smell the flowers, you know, or smell the martini. The martini. <laughs> I always say that you can't read the outside of the jar when you're in it. And as business owners, we're, we're in the jar, like our problems are like this. And I've seen it happen so many times where you come and this might seem like the biggest, most overwhelming challenge that you're never going to get over that hurdle. And somebody can say something and it just completely shifts everything for you. And it's like, they took the lid off the jar, showed you the outside, and now you have an answer that, that can solve it. And I've watched it happen so many times and feedback and access to different networks that, that weren't imaginable before, or you didn't know how to get, or the connections to that you needed to make, but mastermind groups have just changed for people. And, you know, what Napoleon Hill and think and grow rich is it, it, it works. Mastermind groups work. When you talk about your business and your challenge, it gives you different ideas, you get different input and it can drastically change your entire life. And I mean, I'm incredibly passionate about it. It did it for me. And I watched it happen for so many friends to go from, you know, a startup idea to, like I said, knocking on nine figure doors is craziness. Mm -hmm. Crazy. Well, I see like in my own life, like four or five little, little detours, right? Little, you know, I, I meet a guy. And he becomes the first dude I ever pay for coaching, 500 bucks, like 2001, 2002 timeframe. He knows, he knows a guy. We go to a, a strip mall on a Friday and the guy kind of gave a free mastermind. It was, it was just a marketing workshop. And this guy was a, I don't I think he was a New York Times bestseller by then, but I, I mean, he's had like four. Uh, around business and marketing and he would do a free monthly come on in he a few people could get a hot seat just randomly you know he he packed 30 people in this little little strip mall office right he now has a campus down in south austin so <clears throat> that led me to meet steve clark steve became my sales coach steve led me to dan kennedy right dan kennedy I wanted to go see him in person. I never met him. And I meet Infusionsoft on their four city tour in Anaheim at the convention center in 2008. Right. So just little that I can trace it all the way back, you know, to the, the different trajectories, each of those steps put me on. Um, and it's investing in myself, right. Most of probably all of the, the bad things that have happened to me in business over the years was not trusting myself, thinking somebody had the magic button and giving them money, entering into deals, getting hosed, audited by the IRS, audited by the California Board of Equalization. I mean, just all this crap, losing money in an IRA because I, I trusted someone else more than myself. Yeah, it happens. I mean, 
you're not telling a story that anybody listening hasn't been like, oh yeah, that happened to me or, oh yeah, that happened to me. And, you know, I have what could be deemed as failed business partnerships along the way. And I don't think, I mean, I've learned lessons from all of them and having a supportive group of people that are there for you in the good times and the bad. And that's exactly what a mastermind is. You know, it's people who are cheerleading for you, have solutions for you and different ideas, but care. Like when I'm having a bad day, I can call somebody in my mastermind group, have a conversation and it totally changes everything. And there are problems and challenges that, you know, I have an incredibly supportive husband, but he might just not be able to understand where another business owner does. And I'm fortunate that I have a supportive partner. I'm in a lot of women entrepreneur groups online and most of the time that's not the case. And that's horrifying. I can't, running your own business is hard enough. I can't imagine having, not having any support at home. You know, Mm -hmm. it's, um, so women, uh, women business owners especially have it a little bit harder Mm -hmm. in my opinion Um, and need a mastermind group more than anyone. Mm Mm-hmm. Interesting. This may have just inspired me to have a, a women's only mastermind group. Why are you going to be like that, huh? I mean, you know. No, I, no, no. You have turned down Martini Mastermind invites. I can't even tell you how many times I could go back to my email. Hey, Wes, I have a position open. You want to come and join? No, I'm good. Thanks. Look, A, I'm cheap. I know. B, I, no, I have a hundred. Hundred. Hundred kids. See, I hate traveling. Temecula, so I understand. I understand. So Maybe I'll have my and I'll join you. I'll have my women only mastermind in Temecula so that you can't be invited. <laughs> then I will crash it. Hundred percent. It's hey, it's California. I will identify as a woman for three days. Oh my goodness, we're definitely not going into a politics. <laughs> That's definitely not what's going to happen. Oh, my goodness. So now, so Dex. So we were talking earlier. I was like, what the hell? So it's like a Rolodex, right? Now, hey, some of these young whippersnappers, they won't know what a Rolodex is. I mean, everybody does, don't they? Like, I ran up by my kids. I, I passed the smell test of, does well, a kid you, know what this is? I have a 12 and a 14-year-old. You, know, you know what bugs me? I mean, there's probably 3,492 things, but not that I have a list, but the thing that bugs me, you see somebody online, like in a chat or something, you know, Twitter, whatever. And somebody will ask, Hey, what is that? Like you could have opened Google and said like, Hey, what is this? (laughs) I call that a five cent question. If you can Google it for five cents or less, like don't put that online. Oh my gosh. It's like, if you don't know what a Rolodex is, Google it. You know, that, that device in your phone they can do more than look up cat videos and and sixteen year old doing half new TikToks. But I digress. Um, so it's a well, Rolodex. Me, yeah, people would just come to me like, "Hey, Sarah, who do you know?" I mean, how many times have you messaged me with like, "Hey, who do you know that could X Y Z?" And it's kind of like my way of opening up my contact database. Like, "Hey, Wes has a mastermind group. Uh, my friend Jillian has a mastermind group just for moms." You know, there's war room if you want something that's a little bit bigger scale and you're all in the digital marketing space. You know, there's, uh, I know all these people and all these things. And like I said, there is just no one source out there for if I'm a dentist and I want to find a dentist mastermind to be able to do that. So I wanted to create and put that together, uh, a resource for mastermind owners to help find new members and a way for business owners and entrepreneurs to find a group that could help support and grow them. So how do you envision this? Like if I, if I was going to spend 10 or 20 or $30,000 on a mastermind, every mastermind I've ever joined was because I knew someone. Um, Is this a way to maybe at least find something to begin investigating. Maybe I find two or three, then I can ask my friends, Hey, who knows about any of these? And then, then nail it down. Cause I mean, I don't see people just plunking down. Obviously if there's a guru and maybe I recognize somebody, there's a famous guy running this group, um, you know, that might be enough for me to join, but you know, it's all word of mouth today, isn't it? Yeah. So Dex connects has 
uh, reviews on it. So people can leave reviews. So you could go and you could look at Martini Master and be like, oh, Melody Moore left a review here. And like, oh, I know Melody, I trust her. You can look at the people um, who are in it. Obviously that's all just getting built out as you know, reviews are gonna come in over time, but it gives you a starting point to explore. And definitely before you invest anyone in anything, make sure that it's right for you. You know, it's just the starting, it's your first Google search for a mastermind group, right? So now you know what it is, you know who is in it, you have some more information about it and you can explore the possibilities. Most of the time you're doing a sales call or there's an, you know, Martini Mastermind semi-invitation only of, you know, it's not just, I'm not running ads on the internet to get strangers to come into it. It's you have to know somebody or somebody thinks you're a good fit to come into it. Um, that doesn't mean that it couldn't change. And that's for my year long program. Cause if I'm spending time with somebody, I want to know them. We're all in the same house. And again, if I'm not having fun, I'm not doing it. I have other programs that are online. I used to do a local group where we would get together once a month for lunch um, when I was based in Phoenix. And so there's different iterations of it, but just that starting point of, hey, this looks like something I could be interested in. Let's go explore it more. And doing your due diligence. I've, I've watched people spend $30,000, $40,000 on a mastermind group. And at the end of it, say, I got nothing out of that. And that's horrifying <laughs> to me. Like, that's absolutely how that hey, mo most, leader... most of the ones I've joined, I mean, I would say I broke even on all of them. <clears throat> Very few would I say it was an overwhelming success. Uh, I have made friends and contacts that I'm still in touch with and have done business with five and 10 years later. Right. So, so over time that has the ROI has been positive. Um, so maybe I'm just kissing the wrong frogs. I mean, uh, I don't want to say you never came to one of my events, but. Oh, I, I think you've said that I think 17 times now, but I'm not. Counting. Perfect. Are we, are you doing a little tally card? So at the end we get no. shot for each time I, I I'm, dug that little. I'm just head. a, I'm just a genius and I'm keeping track in my head. <laughs> um, it's tricky with masterminds to say there's an, you know, a direct correlation to ROI. You're, you're not sending, you're not spending money on ads. There's not, you attend an event and then you get 27 opt-ins and 14 customers, right? It's, it's definitely what, and depending on how open you are during it and how vulnerable is what you're going to get out of it. So maybe you're oh, not open I, and vulnerable. I cry at every one of them. I sometimes do make people cry, not intentionally. Like I never want to bullshit about my business, right? I don't want anybody to say to me, oh, you're, you know, that's great. You're doing, right. that's totally fine. Like it's the hard conversations in that safe space that you need to have happen to have growth. Like if I just want somebody to tell me it's all fabulous, I'll go and ask my 12 year old. She thinks that. Well, unless it's design work, she definitely doesn't hold back on that because I am not a designer at all. And she lets me know. But, you know, if you just want somebody to, to give you an attaboy, like you can you can find that. But that's not what I pay right. uh, a mastermind no. for. Right. And then like there's a difference between a coach and a mastermind group. Whereas a coach, I would want to see like some kind of direct ROI. Again, you're not running ads, but how do you figure out, I actually wrote a blog post on how do you figure out if you need a coach or a mastermind group? Um, it's a million different things in this crazy world. And, you know, we, we think we're, we have this straight path of I'm going to start a business and it's a straight path. And then this is what it actually does. <laughs> and, yeah. and this in a million different times in a million different ways. And we're all just trying to figure it out. And I love that a mastermind can help cut that down. You know, uh, one of the things about a coach versus a mastermind is it's one opinion. Whereas in a mastermind group, you're sitting there in a group of 10 people and they're all going to have a different opinion. And all of them may add something to help you figure out what your answer is going to be in the direction that you're going to go. Um, and a, a coach is, is just one person. That's nothing wrong with coaching. That's just what it is. 
Well, I don't need a mastermind. I already have multiple voices going on in my head. Okay. I mean, I think Can that's why I'm pretty successful at running them is I've got all of this stuff going on and everybody comes to play at a mastermind group. You also have to have a good facilitator at a mastermind. Sure. I, I was at a hot seat event last week and it was not facilitated properly. You know, you need a timer. You need somebody who's not going to let that one person just continually talk when they don't actually have anything to say. And that's where, you know, I like to have fun and like to play around. But when it comes to like facilitating a hot seat, that's when I, I bring out my whip and <laughs> we, we crack right. the whip and we, we stay on task. And at the end of the day, we have a martini and everything's good and conversation can keep flowing and stuff like that. But during the actual event, like there needs to be rules and parameters set around it so that it's valuable for everybody. Yeah, for sure. Um, so how are you getting the word out on, on this Dex Connects? You know, it's this little something called marketing. I don't. Is that a new, is that like a web three, 3.0 thing? It's, it's, you know, this little thing I've heard a little something about. Oh, you're getting um, a, oh, yellow pages. You're buying a yellow page ad. I ordered 10 copies of a, a phone book. Uh, my kids are really impressed. They've never seen so much data on paper. Uh, yeah. You, just, remember, you remember Steve Martin, the jerk? Yes. <laughs> he gets the phone book and it's like, all oh, these names. <laughs> like he There's was optimistic. So many friends. He's like, I can call these people. <laughs> That's so funny. Yeah. Just focusing SEO, doing different podcasts like this press releases are going out. Like I said, we launched last week. So it's um, also new and exciting and Google ranking. And, and it's, again, I'm in the jar, right? So mm-hmm. I pulled out some of my business books and I'm like going through and I'm putting tasks in my click up and really just trying to treat it. I have to hack myself sometimes. So because this is a new venture for me, I'm treating it like it's a client. Sure. And it's got client folders and client stuff because when I get too in my own head, I can't do it. Right. And I don't think I'm unique in that. I think it's a challenge for a lot of business owners, but um, just doing all the things, email marketing, social media, got Google ads going, mm-hmm. all the things, yeah. all the things. For sure. Those little, all those little marketing details. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. You talk to a business owner like, how can I get 30 leads? You know, it's like, I can't guarantee you. Right. But it's like, I can show you 30 ways to get one. <laughs> right. Yeah. There's no, there's no double down easy. on that one. And then, you know, if get, if one of them gives you two or three, you know, one gives you zero. All right. Shift the focus. Yeah. Everybody wants it now. Like whatever sucker now and on a million different platforms. So, I mean, there's, a million social media platforms that you can be on right now so for me it's like what do I like to use what am I comfortable with and what do I have a little bit of knowledge of and forget the rest of them right now are they the other ones important could be important sure but if I have 10 options and I need to work quickly let me just pick one or two to focus on, see what's going to happen there, and then eventually get to those other ones. But mm-hmm. not try and create content for eight different, mm-hmm. you know, 10 different platforms and what's happening. And, you know, I don't, I don't have a big team. I don't want a ton of employees. I like working from my house. Um, I don't ever want to grow a company to, you know, 50 employees I have to manage. That creates a whole different slew mm-hmm. of problems and challenges. So, for me, it's how can I build this to, to achieve my life's mission, connect to entrepreneurs, and still have the life that I want. What's a common issue you see it keeps bubbling up in your masterminds that members are dealing with? Oh, man. Well, I mean, staff. <laughs> it's probably why I avoid a team more than anything, right? Controlling your team, finding team members training team members, keeping them, keeping them happy. Do you profit share? Do you not profit share? Um, Staff is a big one. Marketing all the time. Um, You know, what are the, what are the different ways that you can get more leads, get more customers? It, it just varies. Yeah. But is there a common theme though, that at least, um, 
obviously you get 10 people in a room, you're going to have a bunch of different problems, but there's always a bell curve, right? Is it like, do you see 50% of the people are grappling with a related issue? Um, no, it really just depends on the, the season for that business. You mm-hmm. know, sometimes it's going into an all new market, competitive research, um, Sometimes it's a leadership issue with different people on your leadership team that maybe you shouldn't be with anymore. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, this is, that's when it, it can be uh, incredibly valuable because even if you have a larger business or you have partners or a board that you answer to, you can't necessarily go to them with the same challenges that you could bring to a mastermind group, Mm -hmm. right? You're not going to be like, man, this guy, Wes is really really bringing me down Mm -hmm. (laughs) or holding me back from going to the next level. And it's a lot easier to get outside opinions and a mastermind than be able to go to you and be like, Hey, you're really holding me back and you're really bringing me down. What are we going to do about this? Um, Where you can at least come prepared with some different solution options to, you know, be able to continue to move forward. Yeah. Very cool. So it's Dex connects D E X connects.com, right? Yes, sir. So what if somebody's not looking for a mastermind? Um, are there other ways they can connect with you or you just find Absolutely. you on social media? What, what do you want folks to do? Yeah, I mean, I'm on LinkedIn. My email is just Sarah with an H at lawsmarketing.com. Um, yes, I worked at a law firm and married someone with the last name Laws. Not related <laughs> at all, but gets a lot of fun questions. Um, yeah, reach out, if you have questions about starting mastermind, joining a mastermind, finding one, happy to help in any way that I can. I'm on Facebook, LinkedIn. Those are my two platforms. <laughs> those are my two social media yeah. platforms. Right. Spoiler cool. alert. Now I'm out there. Um, or shoot me an email. Happy to help. Um, anybody. Yeah. Cool. I, I, I did win most helpful partner three years in a row through keep. So man. It so is, you are competitive because I, I won it first, you know, and then you I, had to go. I mean, I wasn't a partner when you won it. So <laughs> did you really have competition at that? Wow. <laughs> Just teasing. After I won it the third time, they stopped giving the award away. Well, my mom, <laughs> my mom always tells a story that, um, you know, we grew up in Louisiana. She went to LSU. Who all of my family went to LSU. And I guess back in the day, Playboy would have a ranking of the top ten party schools, and LSU was always number one. And then one year they weren't in it, like not even on the list. And people were like, "What the what? What happened?" And they had a little asterisk, and they said, "We've removed LSU because they are a professional, and we didn't feel it was fair to rank amateurs versus the the pros." It's like, oh man. Like yes, <laughs> that is so funny. And it's still a party school. <laughs> oh man, I get back once a year for a game, and it's people are crazy. Oh my gosh, I think I'm too old for that now. I am. I, I watch from afar and, and giggle <laughs> while I while I eat me some some crawfish etouffee and some boudin, yeah. <laughs> So All crazy. right, Sarah Laws, DexConnects.com. Thanks for coming on the show. It's been great. Thanks for having me. See ya. Now that I listen to this, I don't think we came up with an official name. Maiden, mistress, I don't know. It's all good. Um, so I hope you like that. Yeah, and as I was thinking about this, going over the notes and, and finishing this up, you know, she talked about how a mastermind launched her career. And I think it's um, a mastermind that landed me here as well. Uh, it was, golly, early 2000s, like 2002, maybe 2003 at the latest. And I hired a coach. Um, and I think I was already working with him a little bit, maybe just in, in a group. But um, he invited me to... Uh, this guy did a, a monthly, you know, it wasn't a mastermind per se. It was more like a free marketing event he would do every month. It was kind of his marketing. It's a way to get the word out. Uh, it was free. He fed us well. Uh, 
alcohol, I mean, beer and wine all during the day. I'm like, this is a cool dude. He still does it to this day. He built an entire campus south of Austin. Um, and then I did later pay for and have paid for many events and, and training uh, through, through Roy Williams. And um, so, but again, investing in yourself, it's going to open doors you cannot even imagine. So, so do that. Okay, find things, um, make every sale, some more of everything, my inner circle, uh, the five, right? Come out and spend a couple of days with four of your peers in person. Uh, I don't know if you can hear the dog. Um, <laughs> my wife exercises. She walks, she walks the dog, and she meets people. And she met a guy, <laughs> you know, like our kid's age, with a dog. She says, oh, come by, let the dogs play. Oh my goodness! But I digress. We got another friend over. They're baking with my daughter. My wife's playing as a dog date. Oh my goodness! What the heck? The, the joys, the tribulations, the trials, the obstacles, the interesting aspects of working from home. But hey, I've been working from home since the summer of 2000. So you think I'd have this figured out by now? But, hey, come on out. Come out for the five and uh, meet the family. Meet the dog. I guarantee you there'll be some, you will eat some home-baked goods. Probably hit a winery. Maybe do some jujitsu, jitsu And um, you'll get some breakthroughs on your business as well. So I will link to that in the show notes. All right? But like I said at the beginning, invest in yourself. We have chaotic times coming. Find the answer. Find those that, that light the fire within you. So don't, don't look for somebody that says they have all the answers. Look for those that can help you find your own answers. All right. That's the key. And I think I can help you. I've done it for a long time. If I can't, I'll tell you. All right. So hit me up and I'll go sell something. <laughs>